That sounded stupid. Let's go to the line. Line 9, Dieta, you're on the air. Good morning. Talk to us. Good morning, Reverend Dr. Fearless. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I have been on the front lines fighting for the education of our community, and we were and still are on the front lines, I do think, in the city of Flint water crises. And one of the things that we noted relative to that crisis is the fact that uh, lead poisoning has an adverse effect on the cognitive development of children. And it also leads to juvenile delinquency kind of tendencies later in life. If we are labeling children as stupid now, how will we label them once they become juveniles and young adults and they act out? Not because they are uh, innately unable uh, to perform and to learn, but because they were poisoned. And that's one of the reasons, Reverend Dr. Fearless, that I personally spend the kind of time on the battlefield that I do, because I think it's extremely important that the record is set straight now so that the children who grow up in the city of Flint are not fighting with someone who says they are innately unable to learn, innately unable to control their emotions and to act out criminally. That's why it's so important that we keep beating this drum now so that that is not a discussion that is up for discussion when they become young adults and uh, are juveniles. So I wanted to call in this morning and thank you for keeping the conversation going and putting this conversation in the proper context because it is extremely important when we look at labeling people uh, it's a dangerous uh, trajectory, and we should stay away from it, in my estimation. Hey, Dieta, I think you're making a lot of sense. Thanks for calling. I appreciate the call. Line five, Brenda, you're on the air. Talk to us. Good morning, David. Good morning. You know, um, there is no difference between a five-year-old in Detroit and a five-year-old in West Bloomfield. There is no difference. Why... We are, and textbooks cost the same. Um, so why aren't we teaching our five-year-olds at the same level in Detroit that we're teaching them at the level in Bloomfield Hills, mm -hmm. where, people, where kids are supposedly succeeding, and we still don't have the numbers out there, and that's the issue. Children are sponges. They're there to learn. They want to learn. Their brains want to learn. It's a physiological fact that children's brains want to absorb information. Not only that, there are certain benchmarks that have to happen for other parts of your brain to begin working. Right. And so when those things don't happen, the other things that we're negative things that we're talking about go on. And so one thing is, is that since we met these white devils, we have not won anything unless we fought for it. And we're not fighting for our kids' education. These teachers want to teach. That's the facts. Right. And we have children who want to learn. That's the facts. Now, the state took over the schools that, and they were in a $200 million surplus, and now they're in a $500 million deficit, and nobody's called to carpet for that. The EAA was, uh, was set our kids up as guinea pigs, but was a colossal failure. Duggan got to be mayor, and he was on the board. Mm -hmm. He was the treasurer and the bag man for that. Mm -hmm. um, Snyder not only poisoned Flint, and now is poisoning Detroit, but he, he destroyed the school system here, along with now Betsy, Betsy DeVos. But, however, the failure of the school system is because of those people, and nobody's being called the inter on the carpet for that. All of these people need to be in jail, if at the very least in front of a grand jury, to, to explain how this happened. But we're still supposed to sit idly by and allow you to continue to do this to our children? Mm. 
I, I know when I, when I went to school, I knew my name and address. I knew my mother's name and father's name and telephone number and all that before I started school at four. Right. But we have parents that don't know how to teach their children because they weren't taught. Not just that. This um, they they change school systems back and forth. They move a lot within the year. Uh, Colvin Young just wrote an article in Bridges Magazine. I'll send it to you. Um, the state is giving mothers on welfare two dollar raises. What? For what? What can they do with two dollars more? I mean, and then what's the raise for? What is the, is that? What is that a solution to? If you can't feed your children or or live in a proper uh, environment and stuff with what you had before the $2. $2 was not going to make a difference. I don't know that you could move, live in a house uh, for $400 a month or whatever it is, and then 402 would make the difference. Right. Right. But that's what they're doing, and nobody's saying anything. This is ridiculous. They have destroyed the school system. It's not the children. It's not the teachers. It is the people who are in charge and not allowing the teachers to teach. Mm. And we need to get back to that. I, 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 a friend of mine is a, is a um, English school teacher at uh, elementary, and I said, you know, I already know what you do. On Mondays, you get your spelling words. On Tuesdays, you got to write them in a sentence. On Wednesdays, you got to do the, do, do the definition. She said, no, we can't do that now. I said, you can't do that right. Why not? I said, that was successful. Nobody failed when I was in school. Nobody, unless you were sick and couldn't go to school, everybody passed. Not passed because they were doing that social passing, promoting, because everybody learned. She said, no. They they give us a curriculum, and on that day, say it's May the 15th, we have to be doing this. And whoever was left behind was left behind. Those who are ahead, they just get to sit there. Mm. So why would you change what works? Because they want us to fail. The curriculum is what's killing our kids. And this uh, route of our money. Right now, for that Red Wing Stadium, they took over $300 million out of the school system. Right. Who is going to pay for that? We are. And our children are going to fail because of it. Because, you know, they say this. Well, we don't have the money. We can't get the proper textbooks. That's a lie. Textbooks cost the same. Look it up. Right. They cost the same. Right. So why don't you have a fourth grade textbook in a fourth grade room? Don't tell me you're using second grade textbooks. Well, you just bought new textbooks. And then, you know, they used to have where that the kid decided what level they were on. I don't know what they call them. The first one was Jack and Jill, and then the next one, you know, Go See Spy. And so you read them, you did the, you did the work, and then you went to another level. It didn't matter what grade you were in. It's not like why, that why now. What I'm saying is it's not like not that now. And how how do you blame students and call them stupid when the system is stupid? The system is stupid and it's criminal. Why aren't they going to jail because of it? Uh, well, if you don't go if you don't go to jail for poisoning the town water with lead, you definitely not gonna go to jail when the state of Michigan says the kids don't even have a right to literacy. And that's what happens on a plantation, because Massa said you don't deserve to read. All right, Brenda, thanks for calling. Let's go to line four. Maria, good morning. Good morning, my son. This is Mama Maria. Mama Maria, good morning. Oh, I thank God for you, my son. Thank you. And I do agree with uh, genocide, genification. This educational thing is by design. I raised seven children. I had four space, then I had three more. The first four had access to everything, and they won John Philip Sousa Awards and all that stuff. Mm. And then the last three, 
things started to deteriorate. They took art, they took music, they took economics, they took everything that the first four children was exposed to, they took it away. Mm. And so they've been doing that since there. And my daughter graduated, the last one graduated in 72. All kids graduated. But they started going downhill. So I watched my grandchildren. I watched, you know, the great grands, and I watched them suffer through. But it is by design. And this Common Core, nobody's talking about Common Core. Common Core is being instigated into all the schools. And they're the ones that, you know, our kids go to. Mm -hmm. But they're closing the schools down. I mean, I was in Ohio in 2016. It was the same thing. The kids had to be bused into the suburban schools that, you know, were decent. But they're closing them all down. Because our kids, believe it or not, I mean, have a high degree of intelligence anyway. I guess God saw we were going to need it, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And so they had it anyway. I mean, I was born in Mississippi with my grandparents brought us up here, my sister and cousin. Uh, I was six years old, so I was two young, I mean, I was too old for kindergarten. And so the teacher said, well, if she can learn to read in two weeks, we'll keep her in first grade. I learned to read. That just goes to show. We have a very high degree of intellect. Mm -hmm. If our people learn those things back in slavery, and all the things that's been invented, you know, right. we have it. Right, that's right. And so these people are afraid because our kids was excelling so fast they when they were down. to education. They had to slow them down. So it's dummy down. Mm-hmm. I mean, Common Core. And so I, I heard it on a, a program uh, with the Swaggers, and they were really outraged about it. I was surprised because they got their own Christian school. But I heard them, they had these educators on. And when they explained what this Common Core was all about, I went, oh my God, our kids will be left out, our kids will be left behind. And the main thing I couldn't uh, get over was the fact that they said, they were given a question to the children. And whatever answer the kids came up with, it was good. Whether it was right or wrong. And I'm going, what the heck? You know, how in the world can these kids learn what's really important in the cyberspace technology that we're facing? How can they learn? Right. They cannot do it without education and the right time. I mean, I heard a, a Japanese school is going to be open just for Japanese kids because their parents are here to uh, work in this cyberspace technology. So they're going to have their own school. And you know, the, the, the Islamic people, they build their own. Mm-hmm. And so it's our kids, they're the ones who's being left out. And it's by design. Wow. Wow. Mama Maria, you make it so much sense. I want to thank you so much for calling in and uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your perspective. Uh, let's go to line seven.